Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The sermon theme this morning is The Church is Boldly Humble. We pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, our Rock and Redeemer. Amen. So I'm hoping you noted that kind of theme throughout our readings is the humility with which we have as children of God, which the Spirit has really ordained, is inspired within each of us as he gives us that which we are to have to bond with one another as creatures, as fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, as sanctified beings. And that's, of course, what brings us here time and time again. Here, being that which really has been established for more than 2,000 years. And this is what I want to do today. I want to, and we should really do this every now and again, really get a good grasp of the entirety of that which is here, that which is the church, the kingdom of God, that which has continued new covenantally from the old covenant, that which the Jewish people have always had, that which would for us, make us proud to even call ourselves sons of Abraham, to have a really good grasp of what that means, what it is to be church, not just in the gathering of believers as we kind of see it today, but understand the richness and the fullness and completeness of what it is from all time, that which God has instituted for us. Not some radically new thing with which to propel this generation, but that which has always been and which is the core for our strength, the means of grace in the new covenant, necessarily being a part of the old. The word for that is ecclesia, okay? It is not just the gathering together of believers. We can be gathered in other places, a cafe for Bible study, okay? Another social occasion where we're just out there on a golf outing where believers individually and collectively, but that isn't ecclesia. That isn't the whole picture. We can say that's the church in a broader sense because as believers we've come together. We have come to be a synagogue, if you will. And that's what we see happening here as we know in other Jewish traditions the synagogue is the gathering of believers. But the full as they would put it, katal is not present. That is the ecclesia when even Jewish people today go to the synagogue. That isn't the ecclesia, the katal, the full kingdom of God as God has given and instituted it. To make that clearer, for the Jew, Old Testamently speaking, would be to go to the Jerusalem temple as well as to go to synagogue. That is a better idea of the bigger picture of what the kingdom of God is. For us, we no longer need that temple. We have Christ's new covenant and institution, the full ecclesia here in this building by the grace of God. I want you to fathom how great that is compared to the fact 
that they had to go through these motions of not only being synagogue, but going to the temple where the high priest would sacrifice this atoning sacrifice for their sin. And there were all sorts of rituals that completed their identity as the church, properly speaking. That's the same word, the same concept, the katal, the church, the ecclesia. We are only ecclesia when we are being church here with Christ's full institutions, his word and sacrament. Only broadly speaking, are we the church as individuals, as collective individuals elsewhere? But here, everything is complete, and we don't even have to go to some other temple to have the full katal here. The completion of the church, everything is right here. As we come to this altar, where Christ's body and blood has fulfilled the atoning sacrifice that was done every year in the temple. There'd be something missing, please understand, if we decided to simply be a synagogue elsewhere and gather together as believers with our full confessions and everything, but not partake in word and sacrament. That isn't the church properly speaking. Okay? The clear aspect then that Jesus is putting forward in terms of our humility as believers is to humbly accept this truth, to come together, to gather, to synagogue, to receive this, and often to be full partakers of the church, the ecclesia, the complete fulfillment of everything he has to give for life and salvation, for forgiveness. It's all here. All on that altar, all in the proclamation of God's word for you. And so we're bold in asserting these truths. There's a kind of paradoxical mystery there as well, right? Because we need to stay humble as individuals to receive this ourselves. But as a collective, we are boldly asserting what God has instituted for us, for everyone who is a part of that ecclesia that is the body of Christ. He has literally brought us into himself and made us part of that fulfillment by dying on the cross for us, by rising, by attaching that to you and me at our baptism. We are Christ's body because we are the ecclesia, the katal, necessarily rooted back to the Old Testament where we are justified by faith. Just as Abraham was justified by faith, we must see that as ours. From the beginning, we are necessarily rooted in Genesis. We're necessarily rooted in the promise that was given to Adam and Eve. That serpent's head will be crushed. You cannot see that as non-historically or, or simply an analogy. Because that's the promise given to us. It will necessarily happen as it was given to Adam and Eve. We don't deserve Christ's church, properly speaking, all of it. Yet we are told to come and receive it humbly. Our gospel shows us the example where Jesus insists on our continued attitude of humility. 
And that's what I was getting at in Bible study this morning. It's not just a good piece of advice, right? You know, you'll, you'll really be the hero of the party when you go and you sit in the lowest place so that the, the, the host of the dinner brings you up. And everyone will really look, look at you and say, hey, that's a real good guy. He did the right thing there. This is the attitude we need when coming to Christ by the grace of God given us by the Spirit to say you're nothing. God is everything. He is the host of this dinner. Thanks be to God. And it's not just a great king. We do call him the king of kings and rightly so. But our Savior and Lord, welcome to the feast, you forgiven sinner. Come as worthy as you are in humility. Boldly come to the altar in humility. The church, therefore, has been put here by Jesus to insist on continuing to boldly proclaim these truths. In humility we receive it, with boldness we proclaim it, because it is God's truth. And we echo, even in our, in our time, look back in verse 10, <laughs> if you don't believe these words were said, we have an altar from which there are those who have no right to eat. We continue in that just tradition. Yet that invitation is there to come and to eat those who believe in Jesus, who understand this ecclesia, this church, this katal, this kingdom of God. If you are a child of God, if you understand righteousness by faith through grace, His grace, Welcome to the feast. God, it just brings to mind the barbecue we had the other day, right? How we, we invite everyone. Uh, we might have a, an event in October or something where we, we charge for, for tickets, and that's a good cause. But when we're being hospitable, when we're wanting to invite people to see who we are, to get to know us, to bond with us, see that we're normal people, but at the same time, segregated naturally by our spiritual beliefs. Preached about not too long ago, he came to bring division. Not as his purpose, but it's the natural condition, the segregation that we are in the world. But uniquely bonded then. Uniquely the body of Christ. Uniquely the church. The complete ecclesia. In Christ. Not simply a synagogue, not simply gathering for the sake of it, because this happens to be the best place, but because God's word and sacrament is given and received, making us truly sons of Abraham and the inheritors of an eternal promised land. In the name and for the sake of Jesus. Amen. And may the peace which surpasses our understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.